I mean, I had the luxury of being, in a way, the luxury of being able to take my time in the sense that I left England and I went to Ireland. And one of the reasons why I went to Ireland was it was just a much calmer environment then. It's not so much now, but certainly at the time, um, it wasn't just this hectic thing with everyone working and the pressure wasn't on so much. You could still get a fairly decent dole. You could, the rent was still fairly, you know, normal and, and reasonable. Um, you could pick up work, you know, quite easily, just waitressing or there was much more fluidity, it seemed. It was much easier just to kind of, you know, live on very little money. Um, and so, yeah, that gave me the time, really, to, like I, you know, like I was explaining, like to really develop my craft and, and take time. Whereas I, I guess now that maybe that opportunity isn't there so much because there's a pressure. You have to earn money as quickly as possible now, unless you're from a privileged background, right? Um, so, and it's professionalized in the sense that, you know, a lot of people then are going to the MA, they go to do, a, a, you know, this uh, creative writing course and they finish that and feel maybe they're a writer then because they've done this, um, they've done this course and that, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure that does necessarily, you know, make you a, a writer. Um, but certainly it, it, it takes time and um, I guess one of the things I'd say is like actually thinking about it, I remember this and it's kind of hard to articulate because it sounds a bit stupid but I remember feeling really down about it and a bit like oh god I'm never going to get anywhere and all this kind of thing and kind of the thing that I remember saying to myself was whatever is weird about you and weird about your way of seeing things and doing things is probably the thing you should be doing. But you have to do it more. Because if you do it more, then it becomes something. So I think, <laughs> so I think, I think that's the advice I would give. You know, it's rather than, I guess, I guess trying to, I guess, conform or it's like identify like what is weird about what you're doing? What is weird about you? Like really, properly, we're not just a bit quirky or whatever, but find the kind of the, and then, and then really, really get into that. Because that can, that can be really interesting. And that can really give you an awful lot, actually. And then I guess one of the other things I would say as well is to have friends who um, are not necessarily writers, but certainly maybe work in, in, um, in the arts as well because you do need quite a lot of support, I think. And like, I'm very good friends with quite a lot of visual artists and they just really understand the ups and the downs and the moments when you feel really high and delighted with yourself and the moments when you're just like so full of self-loathing and so down and feeling so vulnerable. And so I think it's really important to have people who, who understand that and can really be there with you actually properly without necessarily coming out with the well-intended kind of cliches of like, you know, you'll get there in the end or, you know, keep at it or whatever. Um, I think that's really, really important. We, yeah, I have a community of like friends who are all kind of working creatively and we're all different ages. Like some of them are in their seventies, you know, and it, it's always the same as well. It's never like about getting somewhere, you know, you don't really ever get and all the angst disappears. It's still there and I don't think it ever necessarily goes away and it's probably a good thing but you definitely need like your support for sure. So make good friends <laughs> and keep them. <laughs> That's yeah. a really